let's start. Tell me um, how you first came to be aware of the Antarctic Angels. What and what sort of group was the Antarctic Angels in that particular era? Well, we were just a, the Antarctic Angels, just a few guys that got together and decided. You know, we were riding around for for a couple of years or so, and we decided we'd get a patch to have a patch. So someone came up with the. Uh, with the idea it would be the Antarctic Angels because it'll be the most southern motorcycle club we reckoned in the in the in the, in New Zealand or in the world probably. So we that's how the Antarctic Angels come about the name. And that was what we that was it. We become the Antarctic Angels. That's fine. And so before the Antarctic Angels, but they weren't the first bikers in Invercargill, were they? What what sort of bikers? What was the situation before the Antarctic Angels were formed? And if I can get you to start by saying before the Antarctic Yeah, before the Antarctic there was a lot of guys that, flo that, that were still floating around after that, that you know, that had been riding around and we sort of rode around with them and we were sort of the, a bit of both really. You know, some of the, like Roy Reid, he was probably been riding around for quite a while too beforehand and, and um, Mike Halpin, he was another one. And they, you know, they... And then some of the older ones, they sort of just, they still hung around, but they didn't become patch members, but they were still, we still socialised with them and that type of thing. It was, it was you know, a pretty big group, really, that we knocked about with. And so Roy Reid was one of the founding members of the Antarctic Angels. Can you tell me a bit about Roy Reid? What sort of person was Roy Reid? Roy was a wild man. But he was a good bloke, you know, and he was, he was a pretty unique in his own way. But he was, uh, you know, he was a real wild man, old Roy. Well, can you tell me a bit more? You, you, you say Roy Reed was a wild man. How, how was he a wild man? Well, he just, he was just one of those guys that, I suppose, you had to know him to really understand it. But he was a good fellow with it. I mean, you, you could rely on him for things and that sort of thing. But he, he was a, a character in his own right. And, and uh, you know, he sort of epitomised being a biker in a way. How so? How how was Roy like a typical biker? Well, he he was an outlaw. You know, like you're a true outlaw. He, he, you know, like for example, I remember one night we were in town and got an old Chevy car that one of our mates had, and, and um, Roy got out of that. We, we he was driving it, and we had a bit light on brakes, and we were up the main drag and. We had to bump into a car in front of us to stop because it was the only way we were going to. And uh, the bloke climbed out of the car reading a ride actor and Roy, as soon as Roy slid out and he knew who it was, the fight went out of him pretty quick. That was the end of that story, you know. So it was sort of, you know, he was well known and people didn't mess with him, you know. So he's a pretty tough bloke, but, but not a big man. No, why, no. He why, wasn't. Was he, why was he uh, feared? Well, I mean, I. I yeah, you know, there was a war, but too, if you, you know, if it was on was handy, he was that sort of bloke, you know, if he was on the right frame of mind. So, you know, he was, he was, um, you know, just, you didn't mess with Roy, you know. But, and, uh, but he wasn't just a fighter. Oh, no, I mean, no, um, no, Roy wasn't, you know, he, amongst his mates, you know, we were going to go with him, and, and he wasn't like that all the time, it's just, you know, but he was, he was, uh, he was a good fellow, you know. And why do you think, what did he, what sort of qualities did he have that led to him forming a motorcycle gang? Which is not something that many people can do. It takes a lot of sort of mana and charisma to, to do something like that, to get people to follow you. Why do you think people sort of followed Roy, wanted to be with him? Well, I don't know. I just think he, it was just the way he was. I don't think he probably thought of it like that himself. He was, he just... That he just was, you know, we decided that we'd get, get a gang together, and you know, he was just part of like the rest of us. I don't think he actually, um, you know, he never actually took the, the lead role in that sense of, you know, he was just one of us. He never actually was sort of like a person that said that, that in those days that oh, I'm the, on the head charang and you're going to follow me sort of thing. It was, it wasn't like that. It was just we all got together and done it, you know, so. He didn't really sort of hold that mana in the sense that that he he was the the all time big leader or anything like that. He was just one of us. Okay. He, he might have appeared that way to other people, if you know what I mean. Sure. Because he sort of fitted the bill. Okay.
Can you tell me, give me a description for someone who never seen the Antarctic Angels, what what would you guys, on a, on a rally, what would you guys have looked like back in the day? So like, describe the sort of stuff you used to wear and the bikes you used to ride. Oh, well, we wore denim jackets and leather jackets and jeans and boots, you know, bike boots, some of us. The old joke of being on a pair of gum boots if you they were out of boots at the time or something, but you know, pretty rough and ready. You know, but you know, if you, you, know, if you look at other bike gangs around, we'd probably just fit in the bill the same as them, what we dressed like, pretty much. So, where did you get the uh, inspiration to start a gang and sort of style yourselves like that? Oh, I just think it was a sign of the times, you know, they, they, lots of gangs were doing it at that time, we just sort of fell into line, I suppose. I don't think it was any any great inspiration or anything. I think it was just the times were like that. You know, it was it was you know a world thing that was happening, and there was a lot of gangs around it and further north and that sort of thing. We just decided to, to do the same thing. But why the nineteen sixties? Do you think, in particular, the Vilva stuff started started up? Well, I really don't know. I think that's a pretty good question. I I, I um. I really couldn't answer that, to be honest. I think it was. I do think it was just that, 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 that era was when it became known what was going on around the world and that sort of thing. And I think it was just, you know, that was, you know, that was how it sort of happened. It, it um, as you said, that, uh, you know, that, that the books come out about the Hell's Angel and that might have had a bearing on it too. I would assume, you know, because we started knowing about that, we we we, we probably weren't aware of it that much before. Can you tell me a little bit more about that book? Tell me that what the book was called and who wrote it and the influence that it had. Oh, it was a Hunter Thompson book, but you know, I, 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 as young fellas, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it had that influence in in the context of the book itself. I think what it was about was sort of it was what we decided we'd be about. So, and and I think when you look around the world at that time, I think it, it was probably a phenomenon that went all around the place. Really, it wasn't just here in Invercargill. I mean, you know, I think it it was everybody was. You know, bike gangs become a, a big part of the world, really, from around that era. And why did you decide to join a motorcycle gang? Well, most, it's not something most people do. Why Why did you join, mate? <laughs> I just, I'd just say because probably I... I probably felt that... I, I'm not much of a conformist, and I probably still aren't, really, but... Um, and I think that probably was the main reason. I didn't like, you know... I. I wanted to be, but oh, not so much different. But I wanted to express myself in my own way, and I, you know, I didn't like conforming to do what everyone else did. So I probably that was suited me to do it that way. And t can you describe in a bit more detail the sort of bike that you rode and the gear that you got around in? What, how, what, what did you look like back in those days? Well, I don't know. I probably, probably some people would say pretty strange, I suppose. But, but that was, you know, it was just us. We just. You know, I had a Triumph, six fifty trophy, and uh, and I, uh, you know, I was probably scruffy, for want of a better term. <laughs> but uh, but I never thought thought of myself as scruffy. I just was me. You know, that's the way I was. And I, you know, tobacco. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered what anyone else thought. It didn't worry me. You know, they they could go and get stuffed, as far as I was concerned. You know, like because. It was, you know, I never looked like that because of, of an image thing in my mind. I just, that was the way I felt like looking. Cool. Um, what would typically happen on a Antarctic Angels outing? I mean, what was, what would you go looking for and what would generally happen? <laughs> Not a lot, really. Um, you know, I would just go out and have a few beers somewhere or, you know, we sort of, you know, we probably never really had a, a lot of set plans. It was just on the day, you know, we'd just head somewhere and, you know, have a few beers or, you know, a bit of fun, sorts of stuff. But we never really were that, you know, I don't think we were ever overly organised, to be honest. Was it very common for, um, for fights to happen? Was it a very violent scene? Oh yeah, there was a few, you know. But can I get you to say there were a few fights? There were there were a few fights, you know. It always happens when you get into the, you know, when when you're in a situation where you were sort of, 
chose to be a bit different, you're always going to get people having a snipe. So, you know, that, that happened, but nothing. I don't remember any fights or anything where there's any major damage done. It was, But there was, yeah, there was the odd one. Some of the guys from the freezer works used to give us a bit of a rack up from time to time, but, you know, we sort of sorted each other out in one way or another. That was probably the, you know, that was probably the toughest thing. Was the freezing work season? There was always a few guys come into town and you know sort us out. And I don't think they ever actually succeeded, and I don't think we succeeded in doing much to them either in the end. But otherwise, you know, that was probably the hardest times we had with fighting and that. But you know, it, yeah, there was a few. Tell me. How did uh, how did the Antarctic Angels differ from, say, a motorcycle gang today? Because it's quite different. Well, I'd say that that it's just the progress. You know, we we probably ever this started off, and I think they've they progressed in, in into the gang scene now. You know, like it's just it's times. I think you know that that in modern times they've got more sophisticated, more involved with. There's much more drugs around now than there used to be then, and uh, you know, gangs have got involved in that. And where they didn't really, the drug scene wasn't anywhere in, like anything like it was. And we, we certainly didn't deal drugs or anything when we were going, and and uh, and it was probably because the, they weren't really there. But uh, I just think you know it was just the start of what was to come, really, and things have just progressed as society has, I think. So comparing it to gangs today, it's. Uh it's a bit of a stretch to call it innocent, but it was certainly more innocent than the gangs today, I guess. Oh, definitely. I think, you know, like, especially in the behind the scenes stuff and that, I think, I think it, it, you know, in some ways out front, like, we probably probably gave as good as we get and, and they would today, but I think the gangs have become more sophisticated in how they run and how, you know, and how they finance themselves. I mean, you know, we certainly didn't have a, we didn't have any f financial backing or, you know, we didn't, generate cash or anything, you know, we, what we earned in our wages from work was the well, money we had. We, we weren't in a position where we worked through the gang or anything, it was just, you know, and that's so it was a lot more innocent. But I think, you know, on, on the surface we still, you know, we would have given as good as we got to anyone to want to have a go or anything like that in those days as we would not they do now, but I don't think we were as, um, as organised behind the scenes as they are now. Sure. Now, you, no, you mentioned you got some some, had some clashes with the freezing work guys. What about the police? Did you get much attention from the police? Yeah, but they always won. Can I get you to work my question into your answers? Yeah, no, we had a few runs with the police, but the police always won, so, you know, so it wasn't much success right there, so we sort of gave that away after a while because you you came out in the losing end of it all the time, but that was just a pattern of growing up in a way because you soon learn to stay away from them because, as I said, they always won. Just mind your feet, I can just yeah, hear the squeeze. Yeah, sorry about that, yeah. Here. Um, all right, let's talk a bit 